It's Allie from Little Hill Homestead. Happy Friday. Frugal Friday is going to be a two-parter for you guys today. I'm going to show you a seasoning mix that we make all the time, and then I'm going to show you real quick kind of how we prepare said seasoning mix. Said seasoning mix. <laughs> so we, um, you guys know we have a giant um, spice rack on the wall with all these jars, right? Well, one of our favorites is fajita seasoning. We use it... Um, often. And so I'm going to show you guys the seasoning mix that we use. And then I'm going to show you kind of really quick how we make chicken fajitas with it. You could do this on beef chicken. You could do it on shrimp as well. We've done that before. Um, if you are a vegetarian, you could do tofu. I don't care. You do you. <laughs> I said all this and then I forgot my teaspoons and tablespoons. Of course. Okay. So I have um, seven spices, but most of them you should have in your pantry. I'm going to do six times my normal recipe to fill my jar because I don't like to have to pull everything out to make this. So I'm going to do six times recipe. I will write below a single recipe. Go with that. And then if you want to six times it and bulk store it, awesome. You will like it, I promise. So the first thing you need is Lara's seasoning salt. Uh, we typically use a low sodium. I'm using the regular to get it out of our house. So you need three tablespoons if you're doing six times. If you're doing a single, it's going to be one and a half teaspoons. I know that's going to get confusing, huh? Hopefully not. So that's Lari's. The next thing you're going to need is oregano. Three tablespoons of that for a six times or one and a half teaspoons of the oregano. Sound like I'm like selling stuff at the Costco or something. Hey, the next thing we need is cumin. One and a half teaspoons for a single, three tablespoons. Am I doing that right? Three, six, that should be two tablespoons. One and a half, three, six, nine, that's three. We're good, right? <laughs> I'm asking my husband to mass something for me. It should be three, six, Six, one. nine. It's two, it's, I'm good. Three tablespoons of cumin or one and a half teaspoons. Because three teaspoons is one tablespoon. Correct. I hope I, I didn't just add too much okay. cumin. Okay, I'm good, you guys. I was just taking a momentary lapse of the brain right there. Uh, next, we're going to use granulated garlic or garlic powder. If you're doing a single batch, it's one teaspoon. I'm going to do a tablespoon. Right? Two tablespoons. <laughs> Two tablespoons. Six this is going to get confusing. Just look below. That's where the recipe is going to be. I, have, I even wrote it down over here so that I wouldn't forget. Isn't that great? Okay. After the gra granulated garlic or garlic powder, there's chili powder. That is going to be half. Nope. That's paprika. For you all, if you're doing a single, it's half of a teaspoon. So for me, it's going to be, what am I working on? Chili powder. My God, my brain just left the station right there. It's going to be three teaspoons, which is a tablespoon. <laughs> choo choo. Okay, after that, we're doing paprika. You guys need a half of a teaspoon going in. Of course, if you're six times in it, it's a tablespoon. Last thing you guys need red pepper flakes. You need a half of a teaspoon, or for me, a tablespoon. In case you didn't know, three teaspoons is a tablespoon. That is all that she wrote. How pretty. It kind of looks like sand art, but it's not. It's better because it's spices. Just give it a quick stir with our measuring spoon. And I always make it a measuring cup because it has a spout, so it's easier to um, utilize. Ooh, kind of clump. All right, we're just going to pour that into our mason jar. Whoops. Only half of it is making it on the counter, so that's cool. <laughs> we normally eat dinner much earlier than this, and I probably could have done way more because I didn't even fill my mason jar halfway. But that'll take us a minute to get through, so that's good. So the way that we prepare, and this is why it's our Frugal Friday, is to feed our whole family, my husband cut up two chicken breasts. We cut them into, like, just thin strips. That's our... Fajita meat, two chicken breasts isn't that expensive. I don't do exact measurements um, when I do this. I kind of just take the fajita seasoning and I sprinkle it over the chicken. 
until it looks like a good amount. It's probably maybe a ta not quite a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon. Yeah. And I just squish it around with my hands. And you want to make sure that the fajita seasoning is on all your chicken. Just squish it around on there. It's a technical term. We're kneading chicken because I need it in my life. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, okay, I am going to rinse my hands off really quick. <laughs> you, you, I know, right? Will you grab me um, the lemon juice real quick? Thank you. I have two pans here. I'm turning both on high. Um, these are just like flat skillets that we've got. Into this one, which is the one we're going to cook our chicken in. I'm going to kind of just drizzle the bottom with, I don't know, a teaspoon of olive oil, maybe a teaspoon and a half of olive oil to our chicken. I'm going to take some lemon juice. I have fresh canned lemon juice that I squeezed my husband's. Okay, let me start from scratch there. My husband's dad has, well, he has passed away, but he has, an, well, I guess it would be your mom's lemon tree now then, but I still call it my dad, my father-in-law's. That is like the rant of the day right there. There it was. Um, he had a Meyer lemon tree in their backyard and like it's the best lemons in the whole world. So we managed to smuggle some in a couple of years ago <laughs> into, uh, I think it was two grocery bags full of them. And we like dehydrated the skins, we juiced them, we canned them. I mean, we used every bit of those darn lemons and we still have some of the juice. So, but um, here I am using this. So I'm just sprinkling lemon juice on our chicken and doing the same thing again, just kind of moving it around on the chicken. The lemon juice gives it that citrusy thing. If you want to use lime juice, you can too. Okay, rinsing my hands off again. All right, I'm just gonna scrape this chicken into the pan with the olive oil. So this feeds... Um, Lime juice. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. Rinse that off. Right. <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. <laughs> oh, my husband's birthday is tomorrow. He's turning mm, years old. So, if you want to wish him a happy birthday, comment below. <laughs> My birthday already passed, and so we are um, we are ten weeks apart from each other. So after Saturday, I am no longer old. We're just the same age. <laughs> okay, in our other pan, I have this one going on high as well. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil. Same thing, but today I am old. It's just a couple teaspoons of olive oil in that pan. And I'm going to grab our peppers and onions because fajitas, you have to have peppers and onions. Is this a whole onion? Yeah. Okay, this is like a half of an onion. We just did it more than a half an onion? Yeah. It's a little more than a half an onion. And um, we just cut it into slivers like you would see in fajitas. I'm going to do the same thing with these. I'm just going to pop those into our nice hot pan. And then you guys know we're getting to the bottom of the barrel, but we freeze bell peppers when we grow, grow them in the summer. I come inside, rinse them off, and we cut them into strips. And then I just pop them into Ziploc baggies. They freeze. These are from last, must be August or September, and we're still getting through them. So I'm going to do a couple handfuls of that. If not, it's like one bell pepper or a good 10 of the minis probably. Oh no. Okay. I threw some on the floor. I'm very sad because that's the last of our bell peppers. We actually have to buy them now because our bell pepper plants are like that big right now. Okay. You're going to take your fajita seasoning yet again. And I'm going to try and measure this so I can tell you about how much I use. That was two teaspoons. I sprinkled over the top of our veggies. And then I'm just going to give those a stir as well. What I love about this meal is it feeds all five of us, and we typically have a little bit left over for <laughs> shaking it. 
We typically have a little bit of um, the heat of meat left over for lunches for tomorrow. It makes an awesome salad. If you do like fajita meat, some black beans, um, that's probably enough for us. Yeah. We have some leftover black beans because we made the salad I'm describing, and so we're going to use those tonight. Um, what do we do? Oh, we, we cook up some corn in the pan. We throw the fajita meat. We do a little bit of avocado and some black beans, and we make an awesome salad. But these are leftover black beans. Um, I to cook black beans. This is my impromptu little black bean video. <laughs> you didn't know you were getting. These were just, um, there's bell pepper all over the floor. <laughs> These, this is one can of black beans. We used a little bit in another recipe, but essentially it is a can of black beans that I've drained and rinsed. To that, I'm gonna add. Hey, guess what? What? I'm gonna grate cheese. My husband's great. He's grating cheese. Um, I'm adding half of a cup of water to the black beans. And then, whoop, I'm going to grab something out of the refrigerator that we need for this recipe. So during the summer, when we can tomato products, we can our own picante sauce. And it is delicious. It has tomatoes, which we use cherry tomatoes because we grow a ton of cherry tomatoes. And so I just... um. Don't take the skins off the cherry tomatoes or anything. We use it in this, which also has jalapeno and bell pepper, some onion, garlic, and it's got a little bit of sweetness. I can't remember how much sweetness, but it's, it's got sweet heat, you know, like that kind of salsa. Anyways, this is our homemade picante. I will share that recipe this summer when we have an abundance of tomatoes because it's delicious. So if you don't have my homemade picante, which I'm sure you won't, um, just do a little bit of like a picante hot sauce. Uh, salsa. So I do that. And then the last thing that I add is a little bit of the nor uh, caldo con sabor de pollo or chicken bouillon. <laughs> this is my official measuring is put a little bit of this in the lid and go, oh, that looks about a teaspoon. That's the official way to measure that stuff. Okay, so our chicken is cooking, our veggies are cooking, we are at 12 minutes. That's including making our seasoning, so fast dinner, I love it. Okay, so our black beans, they're a little bit runny, but some of that liquid's going to cook off, so I'm going to put these on the stove too. And I wish I could turn you guys, let me see if I can. Can I? Yeah, let's go for a walk. You guys could go for a walk with me. Why not? Okay, here we go, ready? <laughs> hey, here's my whole kitchen. Aren't you excited? Oh, let me see. Where am I going to put you to get you closer to my stove? Hmm. Um, <laughs> this was not well thought. Okay, hold on. Hey, I'm away. Let's, there's let's my wait. dog waiting. Do you see his ball right here? There it is. He's waiting. He will wait for like hours. He's that type of puppy dog. Okay. Can you see a little better there? You can see the temperature of my greenhouse. You can see my Berkey lid. What is happening right now? Hey, that's not so bad. Okay, okay, you guys are, can you see a little better now? Anyways, our chicken is starting to cook. All you're doing with the chicken is cooking it through. It's pretty simple. Okay, you guys like know that we like to tell you everything. I happen to be wearing Two different socks today and ironically so is my husband we didn't know it but it was not planned <laughs> all right just stir my veggies stir my chicken my chicken is doing great you can hear the sizzle like my chicken is really cooked hey yeah my greenhouse currently is 64 degrees and it's 72 degrees in my house and this light right here is making my gray hair <laughs> more gray I don't even have gray hair. He doesn't have any gray. He has a couple on his chin, but but remember, I'm older. <laughs> Till tomorrow. Oh my gosh. You know what? Like, if you want to cover it up, by all means, cover it up. And you know, but having dark hair, I, if I was to dye my hair, would have a skunk stripe of gray hair in like two weeks. So, and I'm I'm pretty low maintenance. 
<laughs> and I don't want to sit still long enough or pay for somebody to do my hair. So guess what? I don't. That's why it looks like I went through a windstorm today. Like, what is this? <laughs> I did. It rained and we were outside in a windstorm. So technically, I was in a windstorm. My husband pointed that out. Thank you so much. <laughs> So, I like to ask you guys for recommendations for like TV shows and stuff. Well, my husband and I just started watching, well, he's watched it already twice, but I am now watching it finally. Longmire. It's like a sheriffy, westerny type of Wyoming based show. So far, so good. I'm enjoying it. Kind of want to, yeah, it's, it's good so far. But again, if you have um, a show that you love, like, I think I've told you guys this before. I love Down Abbey. I felt like when we finished the show, like I lost some friends, like they moved away or something because I didn't know what was happening in their lives anymore. <laughs> so that was a good one. Bridgerton eh, here, is okay. So our chicken's been cooking for what, like six minutes? That's pretty good for chicken and it's pretty much done. So it's just cooked through. It's nice and juicy. What was that noise? Weird noise. That was a boil. Bo boil. <laughs> there are no boils on this counter. Our veggies are cooking down beautifully, and our black beans are finishing up. So let's go over our quick recipe. We have our fajita seasoning, which as long as you have those spices, is pretty easy. One recipe, one single recipe instead of six times in it is definitely enough for probably three meals, I would say. I get kind of heavy handed with this because it's delicious. So yeah, I'm about to lose my mic. It's fine. Um, we have half of an onion, one bell pepper, one can of black beans with some stuff from the fridge. And then we just do like little street taco tortillas, flour tortillas. Like I've said before, let me see. We do um, like family size. Well, what are these called? They're just called flour tortillas. We do those or the, we have the same brand in their street tacos. If anybody wants to make a burrito, these ones are burrito size. We got this from Aldi because I wanted to try them. So far, I was pretty impressed with them. And they were a lot cheaper than the grocery store. I'm kind of weird about trying things I don't know sometimes, but they weren't bad. So you got tortillas. My husband and I do not add cheese. My kids will. So that keeps the cost a little bit lower. But like I said, this meal with the two chicken breasts, because of the way you cut it, it stretches it really far. So we get a lunch plus meal for five. I know I've told you guys this 3,000 times. We have, when I say kids, our kids are not kids. I mean, they are. <laughs> they are our kids. But they are 18, 23, and 26. Is that right? We have adult children. Yes. Uh, the 26-year-old is the one that's getting ready to move out, well, like, in the next couple weeks. And um, so we'll be feeding less people at that point. But, um, yeah, but they're adults, so they eat like humans. Humans? Okay, our chicken is definitely done. <laughs> So our chicken, let me see if I can bring it over here to show you guys. Our chicken is cooked through. All the juices are gone. It's just starting to char up a little bit. That's how you know your chicken is done. So I'm going to move that. Let's throw a back burner so it doesn't burn. Our veggies. Okay. I used a not non-stick pan for our veggies. Um, and they're sticking. <laughs> Go figure. So it's going to leave a nice burn mark, but that's fine. But the veggies, I'm going to move to this burner because it's bigger. And cook them up. They are cooked through, and they're nice and soft. So they're, they're done at this point. If you want to char them up a little bit, you totally can. But I'm going to call them done. But I'm going to set them on this burner just because it's bigger. It'll keep them warmer. And our black beans, they're boiling away back here. Like I said, I put a little too much water. So do like a quarter cup of water into your black beans. Don't do a half cup. It was too much. Well, because I didn't have a full can. That's why. We made a salad the other day with it. So, Okay. That's, that's all she wrote, you guys. That's done, too. All right. I'm going to show you guys how we serve dinner at our house. Oh, I can't because I have the island covered in spices. 
<laughs> so typically, I feel like I'm like a hot mess today, but I kind of am, so it's okay. I'm going to take you guys back over to the island and show you guys how we serve this up, if you've never seen fajitas. But like I said, this is super good with shrimp. Some of our kids like shrimp and some don't because they're weird. But, um, oh, back to where we started, y'all. Okay. I'm going to put the recipe here. I should just start showing you guys the recipes. Here's our recipe. Screenshot it. Here's our recipe and my handwriting in case you weren't sure. I'll post it below as well, though. <laughs> hey, it's right next to my picante recipe, ironically. Okay, when we serve dinner in our house, one more. We are an island serving family. So I have, you know, these from Ikea because I'm obsessed with them. I throw out those for each of our um, dishes. So I'm throwing our veggies are right here. They cook up pretty well. They're nice and soft and cooked through. All you need on a veggie. We have our chicken right there. We've got our black beans right there. <laughs> we have bulk amounts of cheese. Ques no, not quesadillas. These are not, well, this is technically going to probably be a quesadilla because one of my kids will eat it. But tortillas, I don't heat them up. If you want to heat them up, throw them in the microwave or heat them up on the flat top. I, when we had a gas stove, I love to do it on the gas flame, but we don't here. So there you go. So all I'm going to do to serve these is get out some plates. <laughs> I'll just street tacos for us. Yeah. Sour cream, if you guys want it, is delicious on these. But I'm going to throw down just a couple flour tortillas. Just a little bit of our chicken into each of those. Now, like if you were my kids, you would just put cheese on this and no veggies because that's how they are. But um, for us, I like to take, take just a little bit of this veggie mix. How much for fajitas when we go to the Mexican restaurant now? $17 it's like $17 for one person to have fajitas. We usually split meals when we go out because that's how we stay frugal. And uh, that's it. Okay, if you want to put cheese on top of it, by all means, I'll bring it closer so you can see it. No smell of vision, unfortunately, but there you go. Isn't that good looking? Yeah. What you got cooking? <laughs> and um, we'll do the black beans. Like I said, they're a little bit runny, so we put those just in the dish. And what is our total meal price? How much are two chicken breasts? I know. I don't know. One of these days, we we watch the sales really, really closely at Kroger or you know other places locally. And when chicken goes below two bucks, we we bulk up and buy a bunch, and then we have a freezer. Right? You actually might be able to see it. It's tucked around the corner in our dining room, and we clean up chicken and we freeze it in. Ziploc baggies, single serve little Ziploc baggies. So that's the best way to get um, chicken at a good price. Otherwise, we get it at Sam's Club and it's two something, two, 289, 249 a pound. I don't know, but it is what it is. So a couple bucks for chicken, like I was saying, a pepper and an less onion. Than $5 for chicken, but yeah, less than five more, bucks. Like bucks but that's I'd say like under $10. Yeah, under 10 bucks. And like I said, it's going to feed us lunch tomorrow and dinner tonight. The so. most expensive thing is the cheese because Yeah, cheese. Whenever Kroger has cheese on sale, we buy a boatload of it because it doesn't expire until like seven months later. So we'll buy a bunch of it and we have like a cheese drawer. I have never frozen cheese. I'm just not going to do that. But anyways, there's your Frugal Friday. I hope you guys have a great Friday. Do you guys have any big plans this weekend? We're going to go, I think, to sushi for my husband's birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> and ironically, it's my mom's birthday too. My husband and my mom have the same birthday. And uh, so she's, I'm not going to say how old, 75. But uh, 
Uh, yeah. Anyways, I hope that uh, everybody has a great, fantastic weekend. Get out and enjoy the sunshine like we're going to do. And um, just uh, love, on your, love on your loved ones this weekend and enjoy each other. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Oh, veggie lasagna. Monday's the veggie lasagna. You guys have been asking for it. You will finally be getting it. And it's totally worth the effort. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Clicker. It's always a clicker. <laughs>